Hello, and welcome to this week's presentation of Reset Theater Coalition's Reset Series. Now this alliance was initiated by Conchal Productions in collaboration with Rata Productions and Kumukaua Theater. And we will be presenting new works by American playwrights of African, Caribbean, Native American, Latin American, Central American, Asian, European, Middle Eastern, Indian, and Polynesian descent. With this presentation, we hope to help inspire a reset in America. I'd like to introduce you to all the members of our coalition. My name is Magali Kaliman Christopher. I am the artistic director of Conchell Productions. We present works by Caribbean American artists and Caribbean American artists and artists from the Caribbean diaspora. I'm Sergey Burbank. I'm literary manager for Conchell Productions. I'm Carla Brand Williams. I'm the artistic director for Brata Productions. Brata is a word in Jamaican that means something more. And uh, we do tend to promote and put forward Jamaican culture in all its aspects, folk culture, drama, educational programming, and music. My name is Harry Wong. I'm the artistic director of Kumu Kahua Theater and Kumu Kahua means original. So Kumu means uh, source and Kahua is a mound in which hula used to be performed. And uh, what we do is we produce plays relevant to our islands. So it's plays that um, feature the diverse population of here written by writers who live here uh, for audiences that live here in Hawaii. I'm Donna Blanchard, the managing director of Kumu Kuhua Theater and what Harry said. <laughs> I love the brevity, but there's a lot of clarity. Now tonight's presentation will start with a benediction. And as we say the names of some of the people who have suffered grave systemic injustice in our country, I want you to feel inspired if you like to, to join along in this benediction. Following the benediction, we're gonna begin our performance of new works. Tonight is the first of five presentations on Fridays for the month of July. Our evening is gonna start with Blindfolded, written by Jason Ellis, directed by Sophia Nayar, and performed by Michael Sean Harris. Followed by Six, written by Jeannie Barro, Baroga, and directed by Will Kaheli. Is that the pr proper Hawaiian pronunciation? I know I should have practiced this a little bit. Kaheli. 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 Thank you so much. And it's performed by Leila Kamalik. Please, guys, help me. I'm so not doing well right now. <laughs> Lala. Lala Kamalani Buzzle. Thank you. And Brandon Hag Hagio. Correct? Thank you. I guess I should have done this way ahead of time. Followed by High Upside Down, written by Eric Stack. Directed by Will Kaheli, Kaheli and performed by Kaipo Dudua. Finally, we will close with The Dark Skin Kid Who Hopped the Turnstile, written by Tali R. Scheider, directed by myself, and performed by David Koppel and Jarvis Tomdio. Following the performance, we would like to invite you to join a post show discussion. You can send your comments and questions via the comment section, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook. And um, by the way, this is a whole new world for us. So if you experience any streaming issues, just stay in there, we'll get back with you. Believe me, we will. Thank you for joining us and have a lovely evening. Botham Jean, Arthur McDuffie, Johnny Gamage, Elijah McLean, Maurice Botham Jean, Arthur McDuffie, Johnny Gamage, Joseph Elijah McLean, Maurice Gordon, John, Dominique Arthur Remy Fells, Johnny Gamage, Elijah McLean, Maurice Gordon, Dominique Remy Fells, Colin Elders, Joseph Kahavai. Queen Lilliu, Othan John, Arthur McDuffie, Johnny Gamage, Elijah McLean, Maurice Gordon, 
Queen Dominique Remy Fells, Colin Elders, Joseph Kahahavai, Queen Liliuokalani. Go. Okay, Facebook family. Hey, hey, Greg, I see you. Okay, so look. I was wrestling with this for like a week now because y'all know I'm not really an oversharer. But I think it's important to bring attention to closet racism wherever it may be found because if we don't call it out, it becomes normalized, right? So with that being said, allow me to share this letter I found in my mailbox from my neighbor. <laughs> and it reads as follows. Hi, Quincy. I greet you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I was watching the news the other day and saw that you were giving an interview, kneeling no less, at a march with domestic terrorists and rioters. I was very surprised because I would never have thought someone as educated and as well groomed as you would associate yourself with those people. As an immigrant, it is a privilege to live in America. Even with all our problems, you must admit it is better than the third world country you came from. You must re respect the flag and all it stands for. We welcomed you into our neighborhood with open arms, but your recent activities have reflected poorly on you and have caused a great deal of consternation in Lynchburg. I ask that you refrain from any further involvement with Antifa or I will be forced to report you to the authorities. Yours in Christ, Karen Taras. These Karens don't sleep. Ain't that the truth, Kizzy? Hm. Needless to say, I paid her no mind and I was back out at the Black Lives Matter March in DC the very next day. Hm. But, you know, being the creative that I am, it got me thinking about how Folks in America want everybody to use the American flag as a blindfold so as not to see or talk about racism. <clears throat> that being said, I decided to write this monologue that I want to share with you right now. I can't. As much as I wanted to believe in it, I couldn't fully buy into it knowing what I know. There's no mistaking that baritone like wine aged to perfection. Its raspiness, perhaps from years of smoking tobacco, reverberates platitudes carried along in the wind, seasoned with wisdom. I know that voice very well. Today though, the seeds of truth did not find good soil. Yes, we can, he's chanted, but even though those words should bring reassurance and the audacity of hope, I've been unable to see further than what is before my eyes. Acculturate this, they say, and all will be well. Well, though from the outside it may be the old glory colors, all I am faced with daily is blackness. But I'm not supposed to recognize its existence. The truth is, I feel bamboozled into a weird pin the tail on the donkey game and being spun around endlessly, deliberately to keep me disoriented. Just make it stop. Make it stop. Just make it stop. I'm being forced to pierce my side to reclaim my sanity, my humanity. Are you happy? Who's the donkey now, I wonder? Donkey did said, world no level. Well, I've looked deep within and trust was nowhere to be found. <laughs> These strange times revealing the repropagation of evocative, strange fruit have left trust evasive. I'm mad. Now, watch those full pundits and talking heads work overtime to systematically redirect me to religion which has worked well for them over the centuries. Instead of the angry black man, I'm being asked to smile and sing along with one love because I've got my papers now. But how can we sing these songs in a strange land? This land is your land. This land is not my land. 
You see, some time ago, I was told to look no further than the red, white, and blue. Even though now, I can't see my way through. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> it's a marketable catchphrase. It works. I got reeled in. But why do I feel like a fish on a line, flailing in futility to the joy and admiration of a skilled hunter? I'm told with pharisaical es esotericism to be thankful that my suffering is but a light and momentary affliction that can't be compared to the privilege of being in the land of the free and the home of the brave. So I had to resolutely acquiesce and enshroud myself with their avowed panacea that is uh, stars and stripes. But I have yet to see these stripes, these gashes, 400 years deep, heal. I've tried to personalize, yes we can. But way too many times all I end up with is an I can't. I can't go to the park and watch the birds or enjoy barbecue. I, ca I can't play golf or, or nap on a couch. I can't fly too high, for I run the risk of being mistaken for a quail, plucked out the sky and falling to the ground like my pleas on deaf ears. And instead, I must once again to channel the ostrich as my spirit animal with its, its head in a hole, oblivious to my surroundings, my, my reality. While well, civil society prescribes these blindfolds, some are walking around with built-in peepholes under their pointed white bonnets. Fed false assurances that keeping my eye on the prize would protect me from the dangers on every side, I've come to learn that I need more than patriotic fealty to survive. It's just fabric. It's not a shield. And many times, those who would seek to do me harm have one. I can't see the terrors by night and the arrows by day that overwhelm me. So, so I kneel to get my bearings, calling on ancestors and the Almighty for true vision. I still hear that voice crying in the wilderness, pining for a more perfect union. But to do that, I need emancipation from mental slavery, breaking free from every weight that so easily besets me. Walking this tight rope of life blind is a recipe for disaster. I need to see, to be alert. Some call that being woke, and it offends some senses, but today I choose sight over the sanctuary of remaining inoffensive and non-threatening. A fragile facade, though it may be, it's a scary prospect. Freeing myself from America's prescription for racism. Not taking my medicine is part of the great experiment to keep the flames of liberty burning bright. I can no longer live in fear because that's not living. Today, I step from behind this wall with a clear view of what is before me so that I can navigate my way through. Even if my eyes are closed by force, I want to see America for what it is before I can co-sign on a yes we can and believe in what it can be. Who is it? It's the police. I can't breathe. Stay calm, stay calm. Hey. Six. Oh. Really? Sorry? For what? Uh, it's six. 
The six save shelter. <laughs> Just a lot of sixes. Shelter in fifth place seems like forever. Lucky we can still shop. Yeah, we need to shop. Your friend moves fast for six in the morning. Her friend. You know the one about the time? Um, because it's senior time? Well, you're not a senior. I'm here for my sister and to avoid, you know. COVID. Each other. Well, uh, us and five more behind them. <laughs> Pranayama, 478. Yeah, just to calm down. <clears throat> I've used it three years now. No doubt. Um, excuse me, what? Senior shopping hours, knows 478, and how you, um, <clears throat> Dress. <laughs> Look. White? All alone. There are people here, you know? Well, uh, your friend moves quick. Oh, because he asked for the time, he must be my friend. I'm sorry. I assumed. He, he talked to you, too. I could say he's your friend. Well? Stay calm, he said. By the way, that was for you, not him. It was your hearing aid too low. A woman alone, 6 a.m. You know, my dad does that. Uh, flipping his hearing aid up and down, depending on what he wants to hear. Football scores, up it goes. Politics, down, off. I can't see your face? I can't see yours. Maybe I should be afraid. I'm not. I, I, I didn't mean... Six. Six cents. Four, seven, eight. Try breathing now. Hey, you don't need a crystal ball. Everybody's scared. Calm down. When's this store opening? You know, I hear about this fitting. Rude people on the trails. Bad behavior in public. Yeah, I live it. And my family. I'm sorry. What do you think? We wear COVID on our eyelids? We're automatically zapped with it from afar because we're Asian. I'm sorry. Stop. Stop saying. I need to shop. You assume I'm biased. All right. I assumed. You back off some extra feet. You assume who's my friend. I want to shop too. I need a cake. My neighbor. My sister needs a cake. And I don't wear a hearing aid. I need food. A bag of dried mangoes. My sister loved them. I... I said I'd bring it to her memorial. She wanted... She needs. I'm sorry for your loss. What makes me think there's any dried mangoes left? More cake. She's, they're in the Midwest, a virtual memorial.
Go. What do you mean take the bus? You're kidding, yeah? I will never make it to the protest. Yeah. Do you know how long it takes the Helion to get the Hulu from HPP? Yeah. Why not drive? My flags are all washed. Smell like downy. And sit up in the back and look like the Hawaiian Superman cruising down the road. <laughs> oh, but the gas prices are down due to the COVID. What do you mean global warming? Hey, I am globally conscious. Con conscious. Con hey, 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 hey. Who won the Green Beret and Kanaka Ranger training? It, it is the same. Ku Kiai. Huh? I know it goes beyond just the Aina. It's everyone's Aina. It's Mother Aina. We are all Aina. Okay, so what if I come get you and we can carpool or. Shua, Shua, we can walk from your house. Reduce the carbon footprint. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Every little bit helps. Okay, I'm leaving now. I, 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 yeah, I get him. I get him. Check it, check it. Ooh, we had our George too. <laughs> sure, sure, everyone will get it. What do you mean doesn't speak to this generation? Oh, so now there's fashion to martyrs? Expiration dates? What does yours say? I clip them. Yeah, ole. Sure, sure. No, I get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. I catch, but I'm not sure. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. No, 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 no. I was thinking same, same, cause, well, 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 cause get air, yeah, and then air, and so if air is said like air with no r, then kind of sound like air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I catch now. I catch now. But better than before, but. Hey, yeah, 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 I'm leaving now. I, I'm going. I, I remember to wear the Tilif Khalifa you made me. Oh, I mean, hala. Hey, 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 hey. I love them. I aloha them with all my heart, just like you, honey. <laughs> okay. Uh, we go in 20 minutes, okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So opinionated and kind, but I love her. We will be the change that we see in this world. I can be her pocket change and she can just call a my on my big Franklin. <laughs> ah, shit, these pricks. These pricks all over my Khalifa. Okay, now, how to wear a regular Khalifa. Honey will understand. No, Kali. She will know and never aloha da kalipa because get fire ants all over. Plus, she talked about the slave labor in China. I made the COVID. Come here, come here, come here. Ha. I never win the green gray for no matter. I will wear shoes. Yeah. Oh, now made in Vietnam. Hey, 55,000 victims, over a million Vietnamese. Okay, okay, okay. Mount Hawaiian. Just go holo holo with Vavai only. Okay. Going. Kali. So where's my Rasa Jesus shirt me? I can hear it now. So many GI died to fight for communism and for what? They end up buying products from the same country. So what did all the GI die for? The rich, the oil, the 1%. Come here, come here, come here. Haiti. Why can't it be made in Hana or Hanalei or even Honolulu? Why does it have to be the poorest country where on one side, the 1% vacation, one hop, skip, jump from Jeffrey Epstein and the rest of the island slave labor for their lives for pennies a day? Be the change. We must be the change. We are all Aina. Just me and the tats. No. 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 Surf shorts are made in Hawaii. Or at least California. 
you know? Egypt. Egypt's not bad. They built the pyramids. I'm sure that was by, by slave labor. Well, still, yeah, uh, you know, it was a long time ago and, and still goes on today. Huh. It should doze down the pyramids. How you think a Jew feels when they see pictures of the pyramids or a sphinx? Symbols of enslavement and captivity. Not my babies. They gotta be made in. Vietnam, damn, wow. You know, did lives ever matter or is this like world peace? How can we be the change when we never know how to make change? So, just me and my tats. <laughs> I need a smaller sign. <laughs> Huh? Heko in China. Maybe if I said I read up in Mexican, I can say I never know. I never understand. Echo in China. Echo in Vietnam. Echo in Egypt. Echo in Haiti. Echo in Hawaii, yeah? for sure. It's going to be a zippity doo da la, yeah? This is what it feels like to be a corpse. You are aware of the hands and the eyes. The blacker you are, the more dangerous. Black is in the colors closest to black. It is never the skin. But it ain't my skin. It is never my skin. Nope. First thing I saw was his hanging pants and ass as he raced to hop the turnstile. The first thing he sees are my hanging pants and ass as I ran to hop the turnstile. Nigger thought he was invisible, a hero, something from a comic. I admit, I did not see you, mister. He sized me up, thought he could make it. My train was coming, but I lost my car. It must have fallen on my way from school. The school pays my fare, but I lost my car. I always lose Metro cards, bad habit. Bad habits are contagious. Ask his friend, the tall, slim kid about his complexion. He even betted his friend he'd make it. We walk together, but we ain't all friends. We were headed in the same direction. There is a code. I cannot crack the code. You all stuck me in a cryptic burrow to curb fare evasion and subway traffic. Three times I asked for a new assignment and you said, my training is sufficient. There was a handshake, a cryptic handshake. I remember. Like I said, he ain't my friend. We ain't never been friends. I hopped the turnstile to catch my train, and I ain't bet on nobody but me, mister. He even said he betted on himself. He betted he'd make the train before I could stop. You know how I mean, wasn't no bet made. He kept playing with words to confuse me. To confuse me, he kept playing with words. You all put me in a shithole burrow. This isn't my house. This is not my house. There are broken windows here. If windows are broken and unrepaired, all the windows here will soon be broken. One broken window becomes another. It's a game of follow the leader. One kid hops the turnstile and his friend joins. I am in the streets to maintain order and restore civility. I'm black. I'm standing outside of my body. People started to watch and surround us. I count 
at least three cameras on me. The whole borough wants to be a hero. Everybody wants to be a hero. We need all of you to get on the train. Now! Nobody moves. Even the train is still. My, my heart is racing and I need water. Need water. My heart is racing. Most of the time, I'm holding my breath. I don't realize it until I need air. Hot mouth. Need air. Need water. Shit. I need air. Shit. I must have whispered a million Hail Marys. I almost pissed, but the girls are watching. The pretty girls from school are watching me. I hear someone asking my name and grade, and in my periphery, her friend shrugs. Unknown. Don't nobody give a fuck about me. Don't nobody even know who I am. And if I hadn't been in some trouble, nobody would give a fuck tomorrow. This is what it feels like to be a corpse. You are aware of the hands and the eyes, and even in death, you ain't got no say in people are calling you by your skin. Your name was erased a long time ago. You are serial numbers in a box or a barcode someone scans in and out, in and out to keep you under a coded surveillance in a school or a subway station. Stop. I do not want him to be touching me. I would prefer to not be touched by him. Started to mumble and ignore me. His eyes are the color of moonlit sky. It is a blue, but it is a dark blue. The darker you are, the more dangerous. I do not trust white men in blue jackets. Consider the case of someone like me. How can I? I, I spit on the ground, but... Hog spit at me. Spitting is normal. We all spit. Of course I spit, but not at a person. It was a nonverbal insult and vile. In less morally bereft countries, spitting in public is banned. I pulled up my pants. Shit. People are filming. My mother hates when I let my pants fall. Shit. Anywhere below my torso and waist. The barrel is black, but his eyes are blue. People are filming us. People are filming us. Focus. My vision is out of focus. My pants are down. Hands up. Uh. Officer. I was dead. I was standing there, but dead like. He wants my hands up. You want to see my hands? Yeah, but my hands are holding my pants up. I need to jump my pants over my ass, but I know it is a sudden movement. Too sudden and it could cost me my life. Hands up! Too sudden. My movement is too sudden. My mother will see my butt and complain. And I hope I put on clean socks today. Shit. All the world will see. My ass and complain if I don't. I can fix this. So I do. The last lesson you will learn close to death is how much of an artifice life is. Yeah, we are puppets, but who's pulling the strings? Nobody move or mumble. He shot me. Blood in my ear I can no longer hear. The first thing that goes is sound. This is what it feels like to be a corpse. You are aware of the hands and the eyes, and even in death you ain't got no say and people are calling you by your skin. Black boy. Black boy. Nigger. Nigger. Inner city student. Inner city student. Underdog. Underdog. Underserved. Underserved. Underprivileged. Underprivileged. The dark skinned kid who hopped the turnstile. The dark skinned kid who hopped the turnstile. Your name was erased a long time ago. Before you, you are serial numbers in a box or barcode someone scans in and out to keep you under coded surveillance in a school or a subway station. It is never the skin. Lights out. I am a candlelit vigil burning at the bottom of a street lamp my mom would watch and pray for my return. It is never the skin. Lights out. Miles of flowers grow at my feet. It is never the skin. Lights out. Street art and graffiti. It never ends. It was never his skin. 
I see pronouns. He. He. She. She. They. They. All of us are. All of us are. The black kid. The black kid. And all of us are serial numbers. And all of us are serial numbers. Go on. I know the drill. Cry in the streets over spilled blood. Convince yourselves it is annihilation. Call in the race baiter who, without me, is penniless and unemployed. Therefore, he needs me to fuck up to make his shtick work. <laughs> Even Judas had a role to play. The law does not protect us. The law protects victims and criminals, while officers of the law are taken to court in the streets, deposed and convicted by public opinion because the court system has been bullied by vandals and grassroots activists who spin their hedonistic agenda into reform. Take my badge and sit me behind a desk. Sully my name. I am more than a name. More than my name holds me up. Martyr him. You always do. Martyr him. But remember. How will I be remembered? Two things can be true at once. I fear you. Put that on the docket, too. Fear you. Put that on the docket too. And we are live. Hi. Thanks Hi, everybody. 
<laughs> Thank you so much for watching with us and experiencing this. This work is um, really profound. It's difficult to watch and it's a, also, I hope you feel as I do, it's really beautiful to watch this amazing group of artists come together to present this. This is an amazing time in our lives, this re-emergence um, and emergence, initial emergence is um, like nothing we have ever experienced before. And we're so doggone glad to be a part of it. And I just cleaned up my language to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I would like to do is introduce this body of artists. I'd like to let this body of artists introduce themselves to you. And if you guys don't mind, I'd like you to say your name and the theater you're affiliated with, the piece you are a part of, piece or pieces, and um, your job here today. And if you would also give us uh, your reason for being a part of this. And because, um, oh, I'm going to go with the screen as we can see it uh, in streaming. Uh, so Eric, if we could start with you, that would be really wonderful. Sure, no problem. And my name is Stack and I live on the Big Island in Hawaiian Paradise Park in Ka'ao. And well, first I wanna thank everyone who was involved in putting, putting up uh, high upside down. And you know, Kumukuhua, Will, and and Kaipo, you hit all the stuff. Every everything I put in there, <laughs> right on. But uh, thank you guys very much. Uh, yeah, I so I I I'm affiliated with Kumukuhua. I send my script into them uh, over in Honolulu. And sorry, Donald, what was the other? The, why? Why? Yeah. Why are you participating with us? Why? Well, I, I, I. Two things. First of all, this. How all this, you know, the, the Zoom and any other uh, media platform was going to impact theater. And I think it's, I mean, I don't think it's a negative way. I, I have never been a part of so many diverse theater people in my life. And I've been doing theater since about 1980. This has really helped me grow as far as being an artist. And this opportunity was one of those things because I really didn't have this piece. Um, uh, Don, I think it was you that sent out the prompt, or maybe it was Stena that sent it out to us. And and I said, well, I'll just try. It. I'll just try to grind something out, you know, in a couple of days. And that's why. <laughs> All right. Sort of um, back for my for this opportunity. But thanks again, guys. Nice. Thank you, Eric. Um, Brandon, could you mute when you're not talking? We can hear you. <laughs> thank you. Jason Ellis. Sure. Thank you all. I uh, appreciate this opportunity. I want to say thanks to Carl and Sophia and Carlos um, and certainly Michael for helping to bring my piece um, to a wider audience. I got uh, connected with this through, through Carl. I got a message on Facebook um, to, to write a piece, um, but I was excited about the, the prospect of really talking about uh, social justice from the, from the lens of an immigrant. Um, being from Jamaica, um, I'm based in the Washington DC metro area, but um, being able to lend my voice to the conversations around um, racial inequities uh, in, in America, I think it's an important time and it's an important step, especially for immigrants who in many instances have, um, you know, for a variety of reasons, um, stayed in the background and not been as vocal. Um, but, you know, for us to really get to a place where we can see meaningful change, everybody has to be um, actively engaged and actively a part of the process and a part of the change. Um, and we have to, if we want to fix something, we have to face it. So hence uh, why I delved into this whole piece of being blindfolded. Um, I just one other thing, just to plug in for Michael. I hadn't seen Michael in like decades. Um, it was interesting when when Carl identified him as the performer for the piece. We um, used to be in a performing arts company back in Jamaica in 1995, 1996. Wow! <laughs> I saw him in the email like, what? I know that person. <laughs> uh, 
that was interesting. Um, <laughs> wanted to share that. So awesome. Thank you. It was a really wonderful piece. Beautiful. Jeannie Baroga. Jeannie, you're muted. There you go. Okay, I'm Jeannie Baroga and I'm a play playwright. I wrote six and um, I'm based in the Bay Area, San Francisco. I got into this because um, well, I, I know Donna and, and the, the word went out and I, uh, I got it from Justina because I'm part of that playwrights group that's there. And I, I join a lot of playwrights and playwrights groups and, and I have to say this one is really pithy. I mean, I really love the comments that come out of it. So I was excited to see that, that, that this was being offered as a, a chance to show my work even further and um, and I wrote it, I'm here because I do write plays about uh, so social activism. I, I am an observer of humanity and I feel everything could be on stage if people saw how things are being done. And, um, and I was one of those, I am one of those <laughs> that goes to the grocery store very early in the morning. And again, that whole atmosphere was, who are these people? What are their stories? And I realized I was there to get um, a, a, a piece of dried mangoes. I was there to get dried mangoes. <laughs> I just figured uh, it was part of a commemoration to my mother who had passed and um, other family members who were going through things. And I, I, I was thinking of dried mangoes as, as part of a way to uh, commemorate that. So. That's six, that's the background of six. That's really beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I'm gonna skip over the other producers for now. And uh, so we make lots of room for these other artists to speak. So Sophia, would you tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you here? Sure. Hi, um, I'm Sophia Nair. I am, I'm in Chicago right now. Um, I am the director of Blindfolded that um, Jason wrote. Um, with Braja Productions. Um, and I think the reason I said yes was sort of, I just read the piece um, and it spoke so deeply to me and I'm an immigrant, I'm from India originally. Um, and, you know, having the ability to collaborate with people who are in like so many different places at once, our stage managers in New York, Michael, our actor was in Jamaica, I'm in Chicago. Um, so I don't know, this kind of thing is only possible in a pandemic, I guess. Um, so, yeah, very grateful to be here. Thank you. Kaipo, to introduce yourself. Aloha mai kako. My name is Kaipo Dudwar. Um, I come from Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm a licensed massage therapist on my side job. Um, and um, I was affiliated with this, with Kumukuhua through Will Kahele. He trusted in me to do this piece. And... Um, yeah, I'm very grateful for him, grateful for Eric Sack for writing this piece. Um, and I think it's it just the way that this whole project is being pushed and with its same, you know, same view of you're writing things by people of color, by people of, of by local people, um, for local people, by local people. So it, you know, runs a long line with Kumakua, which I've been acting in for a couple of times. And yeah, I, I'm just so grateful to be a part of this project and thank you everyone. Thank you, Kaipo. Yeah. Michael? Hi, yes, uh, Michael Harris. Yeah, I'm currently in Jamaica. I'm, I'm associated with uh, the Brata. Uh, so actually how I got involved, uh, Carl had sent out that call uh, and kind of expected me to submit something that I wrote, which I didn't. And then, then uh, I was like, you know, let's let me know. I want to be involved anyway. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So uh, he said, "Oh, we need actors." So I said, "All right, let's go." So uh, that's that's how it, that's how it came about. Um, yeah, the, the, that group that that Jason and I were, were a part of, how we, you know, it's called Ashe Ensemble, and they've always been involved in 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 social advocacy and and community development. Uh, so so this is. It's really just like a continuation of, of that for me. So um, 
I'm really happy to have been uh, involved and uh, you know to meet all of you guys. Thank you, Michael. Brandon Hagio, who says he's Will Kahele, but he's really not. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Brandon. I'm uh, affiliated with Kumukuhu Theater. It's my favorite theater in the world. And um, yeah, I, I guess uh, get, getting involved in this in this um, coalition was and it's it's an important thing because. Um, at least historically, it's through the arts where they can have these kind of conversations that can, you know, get people to think differently or, you know, follow whatever, you know, social progress is happening right now. And, you know, even though we're in Hawaii and we're kind of in a bubble, as opposed to the rest of the states, um, it's just important to have these kind of things going on right now. And I'm happy that to be involved in it. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Brandon. Veronica Vera. Hi, everyone. Um, I am the event stage manager. Um, I am a. Uh, I came into the project uh, because of my work that I've done with Kumu Theater here in Hawaii. That's where I am. Um, I was excited to be a part of this pretty much like everyone else. Like when you see this coalition of people coming together to uplift these kind of voices in the time that we're in right now is, is something you wanna be, a, I wanna be a part of. So it has been a really um, fun journey these last few weeks, figuring out all of the technical side of these things. Um, and hopefully everybody enjoyed it and it's just gonna get better and better as um, time goes on. So. Um, yeah, that's me. Thank you. Officer, I'm afraid I don't know your real name. <laughs> <laughs> My name is David. Hi, David. <laughs> David Koppel. Hi, everybody. Pleasure to have you all here. Um, so I'm David Koppel. I'm a Bay Area uh, high school drama teacher, actor, and director. And I found out about this amazing project through my good friend and former Yale Drama School classmate Magali Colomo, uh, of whom I'm a huge fan on stage and behind the scenes. Uh, and I'm really excited to learn more about Conch Shell and uh, the work um, that they're doing. Uh, when Magali first proposed this project and, and collaborating, I was thrilled because I've been itching to do more than just standing on the sidelines protesting and you know uh, doing uh, more passive work. I've been eager to use my creative uh, abilities to really uh, make a difference. So um, that's what's been so wonderful for me is to be a part of all of this. And I'm just humbled by the incredible artists who are gathered here. Um, I should also say I'm a big friend of a uh, big fan of Jeannie's too. I saw her wonderful play Buffaloed uh, at San Jose Stage, and she did a wonderful presentation at my wife Julie's uh, high school for uh, her World Studies students. And so she's just a remarkable playwright. And just getting to work with this fantastic group of people, Tylee, uh, Kira, um, and uh, you know Jarvis, it's it's been such a pleasure, and I can't wait to see all of the plays now that I don't have to be participating. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Santos. Hello, everybody. My name is Santos. I'm a stage manager for Barata Productions and for the Borough Manhattan Community College down in Tribeca, New York. I'm very happy to be a part of this production here, and it really was something that I needed to do for my spirit. So when Carl, uh, our artistic director, contacted me about the project, I just jumped on right away just because it's something that I love stage managing and I, I love trying to find ways of using my skill set to benefit what I want to do in this world and finding my place in the movement. And I think that this is a great coalition that will really lead to some real change. Indeed. Thank you, Santos. Faith. Hi, my name is Faith Cawthon. I am somehow found my way to be the stage manager for the Kumukuhua Theater. Um, I'm so thankful for that. Uh, I'm doing this project because I truly believe that art is the greatest tool of unity and community that we have. Beautifully, beautifully said. 
and she somehow got to do this because she's my intern. <laughs> and I said, I need you. And she said, yes, thank you. Kira. Hi, my name is Kira Bowie. Um, I'm in New York and I am lucky enough to be a part of this as Mecca Lee had reached out to me. Um, and I felt like this was just such a great way to learn about life that I may not know it as. Um, and I feel like what we are asked to do right now is to stop and listen and really hear. And I felt like this was just a really great opportunity to do that. Nice, thank you, Kira. Tylee. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Ty Lee, and I was just glad when I got when I received the prompt, uh, partly because I had been resisting uh, doing anything online with theater. So I thought that this would be a great opportunity to uh, work on something short. And Magali has been very uh, generous in helping me uh, develop the piece uh, so that it uh, transitions and, and works online. So I was excited to join the group. Thank you. And we're really Did glad it work out did. for you? Did you like it? Did you, are you happy with Absolutely. the online theater? Absolutely. All right now. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Lala. Lala. All right, just all froze. Hi, I'm Lala Buzzle. I moved to Hawaii um, about 20, no, 30 years ago, but I've always been a huge fan of Kumuhua Theater. So um, when I got a call, anytime I get a call to do anything with Kumuhua, I'm just like, I don't, sometimes I, I don't even know what it is. I just say yes, <laughs> because uh, the mission is born about the people of Hawaii, written about, written for, and to share a theater of place and um, slowly finding out what it was about, that this is, you know, about community and it's about our present time and what better expression do we have but art to help shape us and help us grow as a community, as a world community. And um, I lived in New York for a little while. I was born in Chicago. So I was just so elated to hear like all these puzzle pieces fitting together. I feel like I'm in New York. I feel like I'm in Chicago. I feel like I'm with you folks and with whoever's watching. I feel like we need to band together as a community. And I'm so grateful. Thank you. We're grateful for you. And our student who, I, I apologize. This is the first time we have all come together. I apologize that I don't know your name, but I would love to hear about you. Um, uh, my name is uh, Jarvis Tambio. Um, I came into this, um, I've worked with Tylee on a number of his plays in the past and um, Maggie reached out to me about this piece and working on it. And um, yeah, just with everything going on in this moment, in the moment of time and just dearly missing the, the creativity of the theater and the community of the theater, I was very eager to get into it and, and, and and, and jump into it. And it's, it's been a wonderful experience. So thank you to, to Tylee, to Magali, to David and to Kira. Um, I, I've enjoyed it, so thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. And there's an entire conversation with We Producers that you can watch on our Facebook and YouTube pages. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna leave us out for now. I, um, I don't wanna take can, up can too much of- Can I ask if there are of... any questions from the audience, Santos and Kira? And Faith, did you get any like a Facebook questions or comments that you want to share? Because we want to include the community in this conversation. Even yeah, if we can't sure. see them. I'm, I'll I'm share sorry, what we have Diana. on our Bratza. Okay, what do you hear? What do you hear? On, our, on, our, on our Bratza YouTube uh, channel, we have some wonderful comments of congratulations and fantastic writing and just wild um, participants and people who are watching. So. Awesome. Nice. Anything else that our stage managers have seen out there? I've seen some great comments on our Facebook page. Uh, okay. Anything? Uh, I see um, just a lot of awesome job and sweetest elbow bump ever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Sarah, do you have one. anything from, from Conchal for us? I've got, oh, Sergey, um, are you seeing anything? Mahalo for gusty performances. Um, congratulations, everyone. Terrific writing and performances. Um, awesome. Um, oh, I, I, I do have a question, actually. Oh, uh, good. How was it to direct a piece long distance from Linda C? Would any of the directors like to respond to that? 
I loved it. Um, it didn't feel long distance because I'm basically, we are in each other's face, right? I don't think I look anybody as closely in the face as we do on Zoom in real life. In real life, you can look up in the horizon. This is all you see. And, and for me, there's a great deal of intimacy with Zoom. Um, and it, it's on camera. So you can see the sli light, slightest flicker in an actor's eye to see if they got your note, if they didn't get your note, if they are feeling comfortable, if they're feeling uncomfortable. And the, the journey of figuring out how to manipulate the perspective was one that we all went on, right, Donna and Sergey, and, and, and so being able to build a, um, a um, syntax for how do you manipulate this in order to create the storytelling mechanism that we want to create, which is different from theater, which is different from film, which is different from everything else, that was the, the fun part for me. And so we actually create a, a list of um, key points to consider in production for directors. And um, I'd love to hear how the directors felt about getting these key points. Did you really enjoy it, Sophia and Will? Did you find that it really helped you with figuring out, get a, getting a shortcut to getting these stories across? Yeah, um, it was incredibly helpful while diving into the process because I hadn't directed something online before. So sort of being told, okay, pay attention to eye line, pay, pay attention to framing and all of that stuff um, really helped when we were going into rehearsal. Um, something that was really fun to play with that me and Michael talked about were sort of like depth of field and like how far you can get away from the camera and getting closer and like what, how much you can do with a frame now that it's just your face. Um, yeah, it was a blast. Yeah, that it's amazing the people that we can work with. We would this collaboration would take thousands of dollars if we were ever <laughs> going to try to bring all of us together. And it's amazing how far we can stretch the willing suspension of disbelief for for our audience. It it is a whole new brave frontier that we're trotting on here. And um, and we're getting some questions on the Kumu one. Oh, awesome. So I see a question, how did you manage without having a live audience? If anybody wants to pipe in on that? Yeah, let's hear from our actors. How does that feel? I did feel like I had a live audience. There's something somebody was saying once that, oh yeah, it's like, you know, you're in this sort of bubble. And somebody once said, oh, I really feel your presence. You know, it was a dance teacher, I think it was Mark Connie Murray. I was like, I feel you dancing with me. And I'm like, how is that possible? But it's, I mean, it just, I don't know what it is, but I felt like I had an audience. It's like it's that, even as an actor, you're like kind of in a, when you act anyway, you, you put yourself in this space where you're not, not being watched, you know? Anyway, that's just my take. <laughs> I think with a, with a, it, it, for me, it felt similar to, to television because sometimes you're, you're in a, t a television studio and you won't get that immediate feedback. But also lately, I've been doing a lot of performing <laughs> over Zoom. <laughs> mm. I've been singing, I've been, you know, doing all kinds of stuff over Zoom. So you kind of get used to that and you, you kind of just do the best you can and, and hope it comes across and you wait for the feedback afterwards if there's any. I have one question. Someone named Adam Brading asks, going forward, what have each of you learned while working together that will help you to streamline the digital creating process on future projects? This is from our YouTube Conch Shell page. That's a great question. Should I repeat it? Did everybody get that? Streamlining, how can we further streamline? Oh, uh, Magalie's frozen. Uh, but did it, would anyone like to respond to the question for the future? How, how will we streamline this process? Uh, I feel like um, we are just learning so much. We're inventing so much as we go along and we are collaborating. Um, and, and I want to make sure I point out 
Veronica Vera is the event stage manager. And then the other three stage managers, Santos, Faith, and Kyra, they are devoted to our individual theaters. And together, these people, along with a wonderful woman named Liana Keys, who has helped us learn so much. And there was another woman involved Marcy just Friedman. last night. Marcy, Marcy Friedman, Friedman, thank you. Mm -hmm. Just last night came in to answer more questions because y'all there is a lot of software going into what you are seeing right now. This is not just a Zoom webinar. There, there's not much, much more going into it. And I think that um, this cannot exist without so much collaboration. And that is art is a tribal event, right? So we, we are proving that here. And um, that, that's my feeling as a producer, that uh, that's what we're learning is just um, every opinion is valid moving through this because we all have something to bring to it. And um, the 18 year old gamer <laughs> is suddenly more valuable to the world of theater than ever before imagined. And, and back to the conversation of community. I mean, Liana Keys, she served as our consultant teacher guide and reaching out to the theater community to fellow experienced people has been seamless. And the generosity of Marcy Friedman and other theater managers who have just jumped in and say, I have something to offer you. And other writers who gave suggestions and, and pooling together our experiences as producers and saying, let's make this list. It's been beautiful to know that we can have community digitally that's as intimate and as committed and as loyal as within one house. And I really feel that there's a great future for the theater when so many homes can come together to create magic, you know? Because yeah. this was magical tonight. Agreed. I don't mean to be boastful, but you guys really moved me. And I'm sure you moved the audience. And so I am really hopeful for how, we, how this creating process can lead to future projects that are even more mind boggling and mind blowing. <laughs> we, we've just started, who knows, by the fifth one, you'll be like, say what? What are these people doing? What? Oh my God, why didn't you do it in the first one? Because we're gonna learn every single day of the way, you know? So keep on coming back because we have five more Fridays down, four more Fridays down the line. So watch I, I out. Know that, I know that some of our people have to go and yes. that's cool. We have a couple more questions on Facebook that I want to get to really quickly. Um, Sean Joseph Tycho, oh, I shouldn't have jumped into that because I don't know how to say his Hawaiian name. Anybody, anybody, no? Okay, Sean Chu. Sean Chu. Sean said, uh, directors and playwrights, what are your hopes for the theater of the future? I'm a writer and a director, so I'll speak to that. And everybody else just jump on in, you know, unmute your things. We're, we're having a good time here. Um, the theater of the future is going to be multi-level, you have the intimate in your face theater, just like you have guerrilla theater and you have um, Shakespeare in the park and then you have the public mm -hmm. and you have Broadway. There's gonna be theater online that will feed into the, like for example, who knows a Hamilton is on Disney right now? Everybody, everybody and their grandfather. Yeah, I think yes. everybody. Knows. So Hamilton is on Disney. <laughs> I have not seen Hamilton because I don't have $300 to put into a ticket. So you know, I'm gonna go get a Disney account to see Hamilton. So they're the perfect example. Theater is exciting now, you know, because we can hear so many new voices and I can present new voices to thousands of people who decide to click on a little icon and play. So theater is gonna be as great as it was supposed to be. It, it was, theater was the great connector of humanity. Theater was the great lesson setter and, and, and the, the, the opportunity for the people to tell the powerful people, get your act together, right? So we, were, we had that, that was the jester, the court jester was able to tell the queen and the king, by the way, queen, you're messing up. By the way, but I'm a court jester so I can get away with it. So we can actually speak to all the kings and queens or whatever their titles are and say, 
wake up. And if they decide to click, and I'm sure their, their assistants will, they'll get the message. I'm excited. So everyone pipe in, pipe in. Yes. I'll say, I'll say that I, I, I come from a small faith-based community. And so I really value uh, fellowship. And um, so I'm looking forward to us being able to be together again in person. Um, but I will say one of the things that I do think that we got out of this that are uh, that is positive will be that we've learned how to do some things more economically, um, you know, yes. some things online, getting together. So we might save a little bit of money in the future. But I do hope we hurry up and get back to the theater. <laughs> yes, yes. The theater can never be um, discounted. It's important. I want to sit next to someone who's not coughing. I do want that. <laughs> I do want that. <laughs> It'll be back. And this is not going to go away. No. I think Jarvis was raising his hand. Or is he just talking to some? Uh, no, no. Oh, oh, no. Harry, I want, I want to hear your thoughts because you always have the most amazing thoughts if you have one to share. He's like, Magali, uh, why are you putting me on the spot? <laughs> yes, you. Oh, well, yeah, you know, I mean, I think, I, I believe that stories, yeah, and the ability to share them is like, you know, a pressure cooker. You can't keep it down, otherwise it explodes. Yeah, and then, and my dream is to figure out how we can still come together because then it's shared experience that creates community. And then the... The, so I want to still figure out how we can come together and tell stories. And this is like a marvelous way to do it. But my dream, as always, yeah, is that um, I, I welcome any questions, yeah, about how we did it or what you do to do it. But I'm more, import more importantly, how do these stories make you think about your life? We should go away and we should think about what we've done what we're doing, what we can do. And then that's, that's always my dream for theater, no matter, or storytelling or dance or painting or being able to go and sit outside and watch a sunset, anything that moves us, how does it make us feel about our lives? And I think that we're taking steps in the right direction to continue to create community, to continue to make sure stories are told and to continue to figure out how we can reflect on ourselves and our lives and what we're doing and what our community is doing. So I'm grateful to all of you. Thank you so much. Thanks. I, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm neither a director nor, a, nor a, a writer in this in this situation, but I am a techie. And uh, so I, I, I love all the, the ways that we seem to be using the technology that was meant for something completely different. And, and creating art and creating theater. And I'm gonna give it a name, Cyber Theater. Sure, pay me later. And um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see how the people who create these technologies will now try to upgrade them so that it can work uh, for smooth offering of theater of this new cyber theater that we're developing. And so even when the, the actual physical theaters reopen that the cyber theater becomes its own thing and grows and expands and becomes awesome. Well, Michael, you're a techie, so you need to make it so I can go pay you a subscription to use your services. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, we have, someone requested that we put the names of everyone involved on YouTube, on the streams, and uh, there, there's something that we're learning that, yeah, that we will do that because we don't actually have programs for everyone. We have an ending credit that will come after we're done with the conversation. Okay, great, and it'll include everyone. We have two uh, more questions. Yes. Um, we have someone who would like to know the performing side, directing, what are the logistics for a two-person scene? I can say I'm, I'm directing a two-person scene for next week. And there's a lot of funny little things to figure out. Are you gonna, if these people are supposed to be in the same room together, how do we establish this thing that we can have in both places safely? Because we are not asking actors to be in the same room with another actor uh, for this production. We're keeping everyone as safe as possible. Um, so you might see this screen <laughs> next week with, with both of my actors having something similar. So we feel like we're in the same room with them. But we also saw a lot of invention here uh, today that 
without trying to, with letting that willing suspension of disbelief carry us through a scene. And I think that is really beautiful too. And we have one question from Prata. Carl, would you like to read that one? Where is that one? Right here, Santos, 916. It's in our chat. Oh, it's in the in chat. chat, right. And so how will Reset Theater maintain this platform to engage in the well-needed discourse about social justice and the disparities uh, POC encounter? How will we continue this? We're uh, gonna. Well, we are. We are. We are here every Friday at 8 p.m. And I don't think this. Uh, hopefully, this this also will encourage more people because people have been zooming. Right? We're not the first uh, people to be on uh, do, doing this, but uh, this has come about, and we're doing it every Friday. So that's something consistent. Uh, let me see if I can go right back to that. And and social justice. That's exactly what what our prompts were about. Uh, we wanted to create theater that was about right now. Uh, we know that fantastic theater will be made after people have sunk in the moment, months after, you know, and write some brilliant, I'm sure Tylee and Jason and all the other writers will be going back and probably reinventing these scripts. But the, the importance of doing it right now, uh, taking up that challenge was something that we wanted to, uh, wanted to, to do. And I think uh, we're achieving that so you can, Keep, keep watching us uh, every Friday at 8, at 8 p.m. and in this platform. And um, we will also be publishing the works featured in the series in a book. And more details will come out so that other people can present the work and find their truth in the characters and find the voice that they need to inspire their communities with these writings. So, Social justice does not, is not achieved in one day, one month or one year. It takes mm -hmm. a continuation and you've got to reach high school students and college students and community theaters and churches and organizations. And they have to have access to the words in order to be inspired to realize what it means to be this kind of human being. So that's an important part of what we're doing. And, um, and it's up to you if you love what we do, support what we do and the, con the journey will continue as yeah. it's meant to be continued. I have a comment from John Watt, who is actually one of our board members at Kumukuhua Theater. Apropos of Harry's comments, Dwight Congergood used to say that in cultures or communities in crisis, there is always an effervescence or blossoming of performance. And of course, if you think about it, we're really now in a really extended community in crisis, nationally and internationally. Um, we also, I'm we're gonna do one more question and this is for you, Veronica. Um, uh, Marcus is asking, um, what is the uh, software that we are using? What is the equipment? So um, the streaming software that we're using is actually called OBS, which stands for Open Broadcast Service Studio. <laughs> Open Broadcast Streaming, one of those things. Um, it is actually a platform, like Donna said, gamers um, use to stream live on YouTube and Twitch and other places like that. So. Um, they use all these cool features, which we are now learning how to use. Um, and that is a desktop program. Um, realistically, for, for shows like this, a desktop or a laptop computer is best. And the whatever the best internet connection <laughs> you can get on. So those are the kind of things that are, are important um, when streaming live like this. Um, I showed everyone my booth earlier. I now have four screens going all at once to um, manage this as well as two Zoom accounts. So um, there, I will throw my gratitude out for all of the help I have gotten um, with Leanna and um, Marcy. Marcy, I was gonna say Maggie, I knew I was wrong. Uh, Leanna and Marcy um, in the last couple weeks have just, I mean, made the learning curve so much faster. Um, so yeah, that's the tech side. I think we also use Restream.io. Did we use Restream.io? You are correct. Yes, to be able to stream to all these platforms at once, there is a, um, a company called Restream that is um, allowing us to pipe into everybody's 
chant whatever viewing platform you like best. <laughs> we can do <see> there. <laughs> awesome. Right. If I may say uh, one last thing. Um, this is a sign on my signature line for my email. It's been there for a long time and it's never been more meaningful. Uh, Stella Adler said, life beats down and crushes the soul and arts, mm. art reminds you that you have one. Mm. I thank all of you for being here, for being a part of this project and reminding all of us of our soul and our shared humanity. Thank you all, and thank you to our audience, and we hope to see you all again next week. Thank you. Thank you Bye so everybody. much. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> next Friday, reset. Next Friday. <laughs>